Okay, Anjali, go ahead. Um, is Shweta there? Hi, Shweta. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, but your voice is too low. You are not properly audible. Is it okay now? Hello. Hello? Is, it, is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay. okay. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, Shweta. Do I know your name or not? Oh, I don't know. Yes, you know, you know okay, the name. Your your sound has definitely gone down a bit, Anjali. I don't know why. Uh, sorry. Your sound is kind of low for everybody. Yes, sir. Um, her voice is too low. So it'd be hard. Second. It'd be hard for us to hear you. So. Okay. Okay. Is it is it better? I have switched off the fan now. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, you go ahead now. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Hi, Shweta. How are you? Please have a sec. Hello, ma'am. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm great, thanks. So, okay. Uh, have a seat. Be comfortable. Be comfortable. And... Uh, Let's start the interview. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you can you please introduce yourself? As you know, my name, I'm Shweta from Jharkhand and now I'm doing my studies and uh, along with studies, I, uh, I thought I should do some side jobs and uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. Okay, and do you think, would you be able to manage your job with your studies? Yeah, because, um, yeah, I do, because uh, I think uh, doing both of the things together will mm, make me, uh, <clears throat> uh, mm, make me a um, uh, better version of mine because it will teach me how to balance the things together and uh, um how we can do the both things together so a uh, letter uh, it will be grateful for me and it will be nice also yeah so you are not looking for a, a full-time job you're looking for a part-time job right mm, yeah um recently i uh, i have some uh, semester and uh, it will be over um after six months or uh, seven months then i will uh, try for a permanent job uh, so now uh, it's uh, time to gain some um, experience that will help me later okay okay that's great so uh, what do you think like um, why should we hire you what will you do special to like make our company bigger okay so um, I think uh, I, now I have no, um, yeah, uh, I think I said the same answer uh, last meeting, but I will, uh, let me try some, uh, try some new answers. So yeah, now I think I should, um, I deserve that job because of my qualifications and uh, my past studies and uh, my knowledge as um, uh, my resume also contains uh, contains some uh, achievements of mine and that are i think that are sufficient for uh, your company uh, for being a employee or for being a um, worker of, uh, of that company okay okay so like uh, what are the in what interests you about this role what are the things that interest you about this role for example if you are like what kind of role are you applying for? Yeah, so uh, now because uh, I'm trying to gain some experience, uh, so it's better to get some uh, liberal jobs like uh, easy to do because now I'm totally, uh, I have no idea about how to work and uh, how much I have to work. 
so i hope that uh, uh, from the starting or from the starting days i should i i wish to want um, less jobs or less duration times uh, work so later uh, um, after some some days i will be comfortable then i will try to uh, increase my work time okay okay so can you please tell me about your goals for the future what do you want to do after your like after the completion of your study and all sorry ma'am your voice is not audible uh can you please tell me about your future plans what are, what are you planning to do your do after completion of your studies yeah so uh, i now i had planned something that uh, i will um, pursue for other country and then uh, and uh, if i will go for masters then they they will also um, want some experience job experience so um, this job will give me uh, that quality or uh, provide me with some experience that will be helpful for for me at that time uh, while doing masters and then after i will try to get some good jobs on some good companies mm -hmm. okay okay so like why do you why do you want to work for our, my my company why do you want to work here okay because um, i know the company's uh, past uh, past uh, what i say um, uh, growth rate the company's growth rate and uh, uh, i also got some uh, feedbacks from the workers uh, who are working over there and they said uh, the company is providing lots of facilities with uh, lots of uh, comforts and uh, uh, their the way they treat with the uh, workers is too good and pleasant and also they uh, provide lots of uh, respects or maybe lots of uh, opportunities to the worker for exploring themselves so this makes me uh, to move towards this company okay okay so uh one more question like uh, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses um greatest strength uh, it's um um uh, now i think greatest strength is mine um, working hard yeah and uh, yeah i think i will i can uh, work hard because uh, uh, everything is new for me so i will always try to uh, uh, good uh, so some good uh, um, uh, um good uh, what i say um, i will try to uh, give better things uh, to the company because uh, i need this job and i need uh, experience also so it's necessary that company and uh, other other employers or the Mm, the mm, the the others members should impress from me so it's like a opportunity so i have to do better uh, if i want or not so i just have to do so that's so will uh, make like, me to work so hard yeah so your your strength is working hard you you can work hard yeah and what about your weaknesses do you have any Uh, sorry what what you said what what about your weaknesses okay so till now i thought that when i um, i was uh, like uh, in a jolly mood or sometimes uh, um and yeah sometimes when i am too happy then uh, i said some unnecessary uh, things uh, that like secrets comes out from my uh, mouth or I, i'm just try i'm working to control myself um and i'm working on it so uh, it's uh, sometimes it, it's like a, a being dangerous or difficult for me because um, sometimes others uh, knows about some secrets that they don't deserve so yeah this is my weakness okay okay so do you have any salary range like what is your salary range expectation Mm, yeah i thought uh approx 20000 uh, okay okay so do you have any any question 
uh now i just want to this job and uh, yeah now i think a company will provide me uh, as per my knowledge and uh, i i'm uh, talking about uh, regarding the salary uh, so i think if company and all they think that i deserve to uh, the, about this job that i'm deserving person um so if, um, if they will give me less also then i will try to get the uh, job there because uh, company i saw the reputations and all the facilities about the company so i have no issue about the salary now but uh, later i think if i will work good then they will also um, uh, um they will uh, make me uh, make my salary increase yeah 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 definitely Okay. Okay, Shweta. Then it was nice talking to you. We'll let you know about. Thank you, ma'am. Update. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Well done, uh, both of you. I know that's yeah, not easy. Course. That's not easy. <laughs> um, oh yeah. I put in the chat a few wee points. Um, that we'll just talk through before we move on to Elham. Um, Shweta, most of these points will be for you since you were the one being interviewed. Um, you say yeah a lot. Yeah, yeah. If you're conscious of that. And you mean yes. Um, but yeah is not really a word that we would use, right? We understand what you mean, but we don't say yeah. Um, so, so if you want to confirm something in the positive, where you really, you haven't been asked the questions, yes or no, right? You're just sort of wanting to express agreement with the interviewer. So you could say various words, but you don't want to re repeat saying, yeah, 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 that, that's bad form. So you could say, sure, absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Different words like that. And you want to vary the words, not use the one word over and over again. Okay. So, so basically, I would say for you, in your next interview, the word yeah is banned. You can't say yeah. Okay. And that'll be hard for you because you 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 use that word a lot okay but it'll be good training for you to say i can't say yeah what other alternatives can i use okay so that's the first bit of feedback a second thing was you said grateful to me grateful to me which is kind of doesn't make sense you know grateful to me um i'm not sure what you really intended to say i think you're maybe saying I am grateful, maybe, or I appreciate it. But grateful to me doesn't make complete sense, right? So think about what you're trying to say there and how it sh should be communicated in English. You can, you can listen back to what you said in the recording if you want, and then tell me what you were trying to get at there. Um, um, next point is for Angie. Angeli, Angeli, you asked her, what will you do special, right? What will you do special? No, yeah. no, that question is not well formed. Um, to say what you're trying to convey um, in good English, you would say, what will you do that is special, that is special, not what will you do special like what will you do oh, yeah, that yeah. it yeah that is special um it is like giving a bad by the question <laughs> what would you do special asking for anything well no 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 the question is fine the question is fine you just have to think about how you phrase it so like another way of asking the same thing is um what will you do that's unique Right, that's one way of saying it. Another thing to use the word special in the way, you know, to get close to what you, you, you meant was, what do you have that is special that you will bring to this job? 
Yeah. What do you have that is special that you will bring to the job? The thing that I said last week, which is a bit of an Alanism, right, is, um, you know, do you have je ne sais quoi? Remember I said that last week? Je ne sais quoi? Most people would say that because they don't know what it means. But, but that's asking the same question. Um, and if somebody I was interviewing was quite good at English, like I said, if they had an English degree, I would definitely ask them that. Right? Um, because that communicates something that I understand that and I expect them to understand that as well. Um, so e either way, the question is fair. The question is fair. But since this is an, an English class, you have to think about your phraseology and what people local would say. And typically what they would say is, is what do you bring that is particular? What are the particular talents that you bring to this job? Yeah. And then let them speak. You just, it doesn't have to be an elaborate question. It just has to touch on the key point that you're asking them to, to speak. That's fine. Um, next one. Yeah. So after you asked that question, back to you, Shweta, when you began to reply, you, you give a litany of things, right? You, you, you listed a whole bunch of things, right? This and that and this and that and that, all right? Now, now this is not English. This is just good. This is just, this is just interview practice. Um, that's bad form. You don't want to say that, right? If I say, what are you good at? You don't want to list 20 things or 15 things or 10 things. You want to say, I'm particularly good at this or this and this. But you make it very focused because nobody's good at everything. You know, even if you happen to be good at everything, you don't want to say that. So you might say, well, I'm particularly good at math. Yeah. Um, and remember that when you're in an interview, you are selling yourself. And so what you're trying to do is convey something that is factual. And you're also trying to convey something that is emotional. Like what kind of person are you? What turns you on? What excites you? I mean, everyone who's spoken with you, Shweta, over the last few weeks will know that you're excitable, right? There, there you go, right? Shweta is excitable. Right. Um, and you come over that way in an interview and somebody who comes over as excitable in an interview, I always say to them, the opposite of that is gravitas. There's a good word. Note that word. Let me write that word down. You probably don't know that word gravitas. Um, you can look up the meaning of that word. You want to come over with gravitas, which means serious. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be too flippant, right? Because if you are very flippant um, and very emotional, people would wonder, you know, are you grown up? Yeah. So, so you want to come over, particularly in a job interview, as somebody who can be relied on and take responsibility and can be given responsibility and fulfill that responsibility and not somebody who needs to be micromanaged, right? There's a good expression, micromanaged. You don't want to be micromanaged. A manager doesn't want to micromanage their employees. If they're a good manager, they don't want to do it, right? Um, and so for the employee, you really expect them to be a self starter, right? So these are all good words to know when using an interview. You could say, for example, I'm a self starter. I don't need a lot of management, right? You wouldn't say, I don't want a lot of management. That might be true, but you wouldn't convey that. But you would say, I don't need a lot of management. Once I have a direction clear, I can go off and do that thing and complete it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so back to the main point, when you were asked, what do you bring that's special? You listed a lot of things. You don't want to do that. List one thing. 
or two things, you know. Um, that's just good, good form. Um, Shreti, you said liberal jobs. I don't know what that meant. Liberal jobs. Can you remember saying that? What, what, what were you trying to convey with that? Sir, uh, that time I was, uh, what I mean, sorry, now I forget it. That's all right. That's all right. I just didn't know what that meant, right? So, I think it, it, I think it refers to some ordinary job or some easy. Easy jobs. I think she's talking about. She was talking about the ordinary flexibility, maybe time flexibility. Maybe I. I, I no, guess. no. I was, I was no, no. I think I was uh, telling about um, the. When you ask me that um, uh, how I will do at the beginning of the at the beginning in the con company, then I said I I wish to have a liberal job. That means I I mean that uh, um, I want some easy or ordinary job in the beginning at the beginning. Okay, well now I understand what you meant. Um, that's good to know that. And I will tell you, we would never convey, we would never say liberal jobs. We'd never say that. Um, that it, it just would straight over the interviewer's head. There's no clue what you mean there, right? So we would say trivial jobs. Yeah. Trivial so jobs. What you said? Trivial. Do you know that word, trivial? It's highly important. So trivial is not important. Something, of, if it's not of real significance, it's trivial. And so the way you would phrase that is, well, in the beginning, I would be more than happy to do some trivial jobs, some simple jobs till I find my feet. Right? And that's a good expression to use. Until, until I find my feet. And what until I find my feet means is 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 a kind of a metaphor. It is very 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 common, and it's used to indicate until. It's a bit like a child growing up, you know, and it finds its feet and it can stand up on its own kind of thing. So we we say that a lot in business. Until I find my feet, in other words, I know what I'm doing, you know, and I can move about myself, and I don't need to be told what to do all the time. So, so the way to convey that would be, I would be fairly happy doing some simple and trivial jobs um, for a few weeks till I find my feet. And then you can entrust me with doing something more significant. Right? So, so something like that would come over okay, as long as you don't give the impression that you only want to do really easy stuff. Right? That would be a negative. That would that would be a mark down. Because remember, whenever whatever you're saying in an interview, now we're doing serious stuff, right? Whenever you're getting interviewed, the person interviewing you, person or persons, will be making notes. And so reflect on what you say and what how that's going to get translated in a note. Like, would I say, based on what you just said, this person only wants to do easy jobs, not serious. Would I, would I write that down? Maybe. And that doesn't come over too well, right? Um, so, so the way I would phrase that is, is I would talk about the positive, in a positive light, I would say, I'm really happy to do complex jobs, um, but obviously it might take me a few weeks just to find my way in and around your organization. Now. Something like that, you see? So you're, you're stating that you're up for anything, but you realize that you do need to go into the job. You're just acknowledging that. Um, now, the next question was, what is your greatest strength? And you said working hard. Um, now, that's not a good answer, Mr. Weta. Um, it might be true, but it's not a good answer because anybody can work hard. Um, you're really wanting to think about these kind of questions and have some answers ready to go, right? You have some answers. Interviews are all about preparation. And so when you get hit with that question or the follow-on question is what, was, what, you, what are you weak at? 
you don't want to be rooting around for an answer. You just you want to know exactly what your answer is going to be. And you hit them with that, right? And you have a good answer prepared. But what is your greatest strength? Don't say working hard. You, you, your greatest strength needs to be something else. So it could be, some examples might be, um, well, I'm very analytical. And I like problem solving. I like to get to the bottom of an issue. I mean, that might be a good answer, right? Or you might say, I am a people person and like working with people. I seem to get on well with people. So um, maybe one of my greatest strengths is getting people to work together well. That's a fair answer. So, but think through the various things that you want to say to that answer. It's a key question and you want to nail it, nail that answer. Right? And similarly with a follow-on question, what is your weakest point, right? Um, you said you give away secrets too easily. I've never heard that said before. That was fun. I was laughing to myself. He's saying that. Um, you don't want to say that in an interview, even if it's true, right? Even if it's true, you don't want to say that in an interview, right? Because what am I going to write down? This girl cannot keep a secret. I can't tell her anything. She's going to go and blab it to somebody, right? Her grandmother. And the whole time will know, right? So, so not a not a good answer. Think about what the the right answer is. Um, there is a virtue in being honest and candid. Do you know that word, candid? Do you know that word? Candid is like honest, but candid. It, it conveys something different from honest. Honest has got the idea of, I'm not going to tell a lie. That's what honesty is, right? But candid ha conveys the idea of being transparent. I'm not hiding anything. You see, I could be honest, but not tell you everything. I could be cloaking something. I'm still honest. I didn't tell you a lie, but I didn't tell you everything. But if I'm candid, I'm kind of not holding anything back. Does that make sense? So I'm using that word in the context of what do you convey in an interview? You don't want to come over as naive. It's another good word, naive. And a naive person is somebody who believes everything, right? Whatever anybody says to them, they believe it, right? And that's naive because not everybody tells you the truth. And not everybody tells you the whole truth, right? So, so there is rewards in life for being somewhat sophisticated. You don't want to be skeptical. The opposite of that would be the skeptical. Skeptical. What, what you explain about the naive? Naive, naive means a naive person would believe every word without saying, no, that can't be true. Right? That's what a naive person is. The opposite of naive would be skeptical Skeptical person says, I don't believe anything you say. Right? Too skeptical. So there's a balance in these things. You don't want to be naive, simple, and you don't want to be too skeptical, a cynic or a cynic. Right? So the Scots, the Scots, our, our kind of people are quite cynical. Aye, 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 that'll be right then. The saying I, which is like, I agree, but actually they don't agree, right? They're cynical, right? So, so somebody, for example, might come on here and say, my government is great, it's really great, right? Now, if I knew what country they're from, I will either believe them or I won't believe them. 
if I believed everything everyone said, absolutely, I would be naive. But if I didn't believe anything anybody said to me, I would be a total cynic. And the truth is somewhere in between. Is that all making sense? We're straight away from interview technique here and into the world of philosophy and all sorts of things. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So getting back to the interview questions, the, um, you, on the greatest strength question, you said working hard, and I've already explained, you don't want to say that. You want to have something more sophisticated an answer than that, right? It could be, and it wants to be in the domain of the employer, right? So um, let's say it's a process job. You have to, to, to do some stuff. You could say, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm quite diligent and I don't like making mistakes. Now that conveys something about your personality. Yeah. Um, and it's a virtue in the context of an employment situation. And on the weakness point, you said, I give away secrets too easy. Not a good answer. You want to think about what your weakness is and give away something that is, this is where I use the word candid. It's candid, it's truthful, it feels truthful to the hearer. But you don't want it to be something so bad that, well, I'm not going to employ this person then, right? Because you're trying to win the job at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So, so you want to give away a little, but it's just a little. Remember, interviews are a game, right? You're, you're in the game with other people. There's always multiple people getting interviewed. And you're selling your personality and your, pers your person, the kind of person you are. And if I am interviewing you, I am trying to understand your qualifications and also the chemistry of your personality, would you fit in with this team? You know, would you be fun to work with? Would you be a pain to work with? Yeah. All of these things are being assessed. And somebody is saying, you know, they're going to rank the candidates, right? And the candidate at the top of the ranking is the one that's going to get the job offer. Um, one of the last things uh, Anthony asked you was, do you have any other questions? And you didn't have any, right? So this is, this is not interview technique and not English. Always have at least one um, plus a backup question to ask. Because if you have no questions, you say, I have no questions, that's like you're not prepared for the interview. That, that's how I read that. If I'm an interview, I'm reading that. You, you, you have no questions at all for me? You, you're not serious about this job then, right? So I'm, I'm going to mark you down for having no questions. You going to say something, Shreda? Yeah, sir. I think uh, um, Anjali they didn't ask me that question that do you have any question? She did. Sorry, but I, I uh, maybe... Oh, sorry. She definitely asked that question. You maybe didn't hear it, but she asked you that question. So you maybe didn't process it. Um, and then the last point, again, this is not English. This is just good interview technique. You said, I have no issue about salary, right? You, you, you would never say that. In, the, in a real interview, you would never say that. Yeah. Um, because you don't want to come over as cheap. Right? You want to be paid what you're worth. Um, and so if you do have a salary expectation, you know, you can offer that. Um, but don't say, I'll take anything. You know, that, that comes over as too cheap. Hopefully that was yeah. helpful. Hopefully, <laughs> who knows even hard on you. But interviews are hard, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you feedback here that might help you when you do a real interview, for real. But I think at last uh, I said that approx, I figured out the uh, salary amount. Uh, so I said that 20,000. Yeah. 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 Anyway, all this is practice and it's fun. 
you know, when you're practicing learning and practicing speaking, a general good technique in interviews is to pause. Don't, don't always be offering answers to every question just like that off the top of your tongue. Take your time. Because if you take your time, the other person thinks what she's thinking. She's not answering the first thing that comes into her head. She's processing and then thinking. That, that gets a big tick, a big tick in an interview. Okay? Even if you do know the answer immediately, you're not going to say, you don't, and don't do it over after every question. But for some questions, you want to pause for a moment and then answer. Yeah? Okay, there we go. Elham's turn. Are you ready? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> right. So you you get the benefit of all that coaching that I just yeah, did, exactly. uh, uh, Shreta there. So, um, what would you like it to be? An interview for a job, or an interview for a degree course, or what kind of interview would you like to be, Elham? Uh, I, I prefer the job interview. Thank okay. You. And in what field? What field are we? Are we? Am I hiring you? In? Uh, let's take the IT job. Okay, IT. Fine. Okay, so I'm going to interview you for a job in my team then, right? Because that's yeah. that, that's my area. Yeah. Of expertise. Okay. Um, right. Let's let's get into into rule. Um, I won't make any comments until the end. Um, and I'll maybe make some notes of anything that I want to talk about in the okay. chat box. Okay. So, um, Ms. Elham, uh, welcome to um, our office today. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity and considering me for the stroll. No problem. You're very welcome. Um, now I want you to feel relaxed. I know interviews are nerve and nerve wracking experiences. I've had many myself uh, through the years. So I want you to relax and take your time. And um, there's some water here for you. So feel free to take a drink of water at any point um, and, um, and ask whatever questions you want, because this is uh, as much about you finding out about us as an organization um, and if you really want to come and work here or not. So, so sure. I want you to feel uh, relaxed. Um, sure. Now, the role that you've applied for is a uh, software developer on our, our team. Let me tell you, take a moment just to tell you a bit about what our team does, and then we can get into a bit more detail. So what our team does is it focuses on innovation right so we we are typically dealing with very leading edge bleeding edge software things that, that have come out technologies that have recently become available when i say recent it could be you know anything up to three years old not not typically older than that because then they have tended to become mainstream so anything that is fairly new so you can think of things like blockchain and quantum computing mm -hmm. and um, digital identity, machine learning, that kind of thing. So it, it's in all of those spheres and in no one area. And so one of the things that I and we really look for is someone who's adaptable and willing to learn new things all the time you'll be doing. It's not like you'll learn the job and then that will be you for the next five years. You'll know what you're working on. It, it, every project will be different. And so I want to just get a sense at the beginning if you're comfortable learning new things on a regular basis. Yes, that's interesting. So give, can, can you give me an example from your previous experience where you've been learning some new things and, um, and it, if you got a kick out of it and, and how you got a kick out of it? Yes. 
uh, first of all, I should uh, uh, mention that I have a background in IT in uh, computer networking. So I always had to read documents and Google uh, problems, uh, which uh, were never happened before. So uh, I have learned to uh, be a um, always learner. Uh, so I, I'm com uh, completely comfortable with learning every day and updating my information. And also I'm kind of curious person. I always search every word uh, that is that trigger my mind triggers my mind. So um, I, I like to know more about things and increase my knowledge. Okay. Good. Good. And what about problem solving? Do you enjoy problem solving or do you run away from problems? Uh, mostly I, I enjoy problem solving. It's a kind of challenge to my mind and uh, it helps, it helps, it uh, gives me the idea of uh, um, being smart, staying uh, at the edge of the technology. So yes, I like the problem solving. Okay. Now, what about teamwork? It's very important for us to, you know, working in a team, you're very, almost never working in isolation. So how do you, how do you get on with um, other colleagues and have you examples where you have created something in conjunction with some colleagues or students at university, either or? Um, Uh, would you give me a second? Yes, yeah, sure, no problem. I'm sorry, I need some work. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I have uh, I have experiences on on uh, running teams, and uh, also I have an experience of uh, starting an a R and D department in a company. A programming company, and also I have uh, passed some facilitation uh, classes and workshops, and I uh, always use what I have learned in that in those workshops in my presentations. Okay, so from that, I'm picking up that you're quite comfortable as an organizer, organizing work, and organizing other people. That's good. We we'll look for mm -hmm. that. I'm also trying to ascertain if you're how comfortable are you working with other people that are at the same level as you, Elham, right? So, so peers, yeah. um, that kind of thing. So, so two parts of the question. Part A is how comfortable are you dealing with peers where you are not above or below, you're just a peer mm -hmm. of other people in a team that might be up to about, we tend to work with pizza teams, right? So up to about six people. Um, and then part B of the question is, how do you cope when someone you're working with doesn't feel you sense that they're not pulling their weight? You know, you feel you're working hard, but they're not working hard. And then that tends to reflect on you both. So, so two parts of that question. Why don't you ruminate on that for a few minutes, please? Yes, sure. So I should say, if I can uh, uh, work uh, properly with a peer more, and secondly, if there is any problem with uh, uh, um, um, yeah. equal contributing to the team, how I solve them. Yes. Okay. For the first one, I should say, uh, uh, as a, again, as a, uh, as an IT staff, uh, I have uh, worked with different departments, which uh, uh, they were never uh, upper on or uh, what should I say down it. <laughs> oh, uh, we, we we were totally peers, and we had to work with each other. And uh, I had the responsibility to 
is their connection, uh, uh, is their connectivity. And so uh, I have I have enough, uh, I, I have a good experience of working with uh, peers. And uh, I, I have had many uh, experiences and many challenges that we, I had to solve during these years uh, with different departments. Uh, so I, I think I, I can solve, uh, I, I can get along with different people at the same level. And also I have a good communication skill, um, maybe not a skill, it's a kind of experience I have had during years. So I think I can communicate with people. And about the second part of the question, uh, well, uh, honestly, that bothers a lot, but it's something that has always been in the in every team. Uh, we participate from our childhood in our university times or any any time. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I admit that it will uh, it will be a pain in the neck, but uh, I prefer to uh, keep the team uh, going forward. Uh, instead of uh, uh, focusing on the team quarrels. But if it is uh, a permanent problem and if uh, the problem is going, uh, if I see that the problem is going to be um, for always, I may uh, talk to the person and ask for uh, some changes. I may ask, uh, I may go out with that person, like um, initiating some more friendly at, uh, relationship with them uh, and make that uh, solve between us. Uh, if uh, it didn't happen, if it don't happen, if it doesn't happen, I will uh, have to uh, consult with some HR department or maybe a higher rank uh, manager. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Elham. Now, uh, my next question is in connection with your uh, your longer term aspirations. Um, so, you know, what do you see yourself doing in ten year, five years, or ten years time? Um, you know, ultimately, do you see yourself as a technician, technical person who wants to be building things? Or do you see yourself as a as a manager, managing other people? W where do you see yourself going? <laughs> Can I have both? <laughs> well, that's an interesting um, dichotomy. There's a good word for you. There's an that's an interesting dichotomy. Um, the answer is practically no, right? Because mm -hmm. nobody really can keep up if, because, you know, technology, as you will know, being in this space, is something that is constantly changing. And so to be current, you have to be learning new things all the time. Yes. And whilst you can still be hands-on and doing things and maybe be a team leader, mm -hmm. you know, dishing out a little bit of work for some colleagues, you can't essentially move up the rankings of management because once you get only one or two levels up, you haven't got the time anymore. You're so busy doing all the things that a manager does, which is managing the stream of work and the communications out of the team and issues and hiring and firing and all of that. Yeah. You, you, that, you, that you can't be a, a, an actual valued contributor anymore. That's a sad reality. Right? This, is, this is something that affects, you know, IT. I mean, IT is different from law. You know, if you, you can be a very senior lawyer and still actually practice law, or you could be a very senior doctor and you still practice medicine, um, but in IT, if you get senior, you, you, you're not doing hands-on unless you are addicted to it and 
do it as a hobby on the side. You know, there, there are some people yeah. like that, unusual personality types. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So in my experience, so I'm just giving a very honest answer here, a very candid answer here. In my experience, that at a certain point in time, if you want to do the management thing, which is perfectly legitimate, you will detach. You will get detached from the the day to day machinations of building things with software. Yeah, thank you for uh, uh, for the disclosure. Uh, thank you for giving me your experience. Um, if I uh, well, if I have to choose, I, because I want to experience new uh, uh, positions. Uh, new adventures, I would uh, pick uh, the management part, but I think uh, at least for a while, I would uh, keep myself in my free times, in my personal time, to be still in some projects. Yeah. Another observation that I'll give you for free right, is almost anybody can be a manager, right? Now, that doesn't mean to say it'll be a good manager, but almost anybody can do it. Um, because there are really not a lot of skills required to be a manager. Um, but not everybody can do software. You need proper skills to do software. Yeah. Um, and in the olden days, in the golden olden days, like to progress, you tended to, needed to become a manager. But nowadays, because software is so highly rated and well paid, you can become quite senior even with a technical hat on. You're not managing you know, hundreds and thousands of people, but you can become quite senior in the software development game. So it, it really comes back to your heart. And I would say it's hard to go back to. So like, if you want to give it up, that's all right, but think carefully before you do that because it's, it's hard to go back again if you decide the management thing isn't for you, you know? I see, yeah. So, so um, as I always say to people, you know, do what you love, right? Do what you love, don't do, I, I read an essay a few years ago uh, by a guy called Paul Graham and uh, it's still available on the internet and um, the, the essay was titled do what you love right and he basically said don't do anything for money and don't do anything for prestige so don't take the manager job just because of the prestige of being a manager right so that's the mm -hmm. wrong motive i mean if you want to be a manager that's okay but if that's mm -hmm. not really what you want to do and you only want to do it for prestige or you want to do it for the money you're doing it for the wrong reasons and he's he argues in that quite short paper if you do what you love you will be good at it because you love it, right? And, yeah. and because you're going to be good at it, all the other rewards will come, right? The pay and all of that, everything else, it will, it will come to you. So, so I remember reading that paper many years ago and I've never forgotten it, right? Never forgotten it. And um, that guy now, Paul Graham, runs Y Combinator, which is one of the largest... Um, and venture capital companies in the west coast of america so you know he's done quite well for himself you know so that was his philosophy his philosophy was work really hard and then you don't have to work for the rest of your life if you don't want to that was his philosophy <laughs> um, so there you go okay well listen and uh, our time's up already that seems to have passed very quickly but i want to thank you for your time and um i will be in touch with you probably within about a week once we have interviewed all the candidates. But um, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. OK, thank you. So, OK. And uh, may, may I uh, add, a, add a question? Yeah. Uh, but I, it, it is always a challenge for me, and I, I, I'm not sure uh, what the inter interviewers are uh, looking for when they ask about our aspiration and about you know, how we uh, look at our position, for example, five years later, 10 years later. I, I'm not sure what they are looking for. Right. Good question. Now, the answer is it doesn't matter what you say here, right? 
it, it will not affect your um, marks, if you like, in the interview. It doesn't matter what you say. You can make up anything here, right? But it's just another question that is a useful thing for you to sell yourself. And that's how to sell it. That's how to think about it, right? It doesn't matter. No one's going to hold it to you. No one's going to hold you to it and say, uh, you said you wanted to be X, but you've turned out you, you wanted to do Y. Right? Yeah. Because I, I have seen that, you know, the manager, the direct manager is... Uh, uh, asking the question and if you say you know it's a kind of risky answer if you say I want to be uh, in uh, the hierarchy of the system I want to have some growth it's a kind of uh, announcing that I am a danger to the manager no no well I, I mean if that's the case then that's not an organization you want to work in um, and, and in no real job in any real situation would they ever look at that as a negative. They would look at that as a positive. Well, this person's got some ambition. In general, employers want people with ambition. And so, you know, I mean, an interviewer can say, I actually want your job. Yours is, you know, might seem a bit rude, but you can, you can get away with saying that. Seriously, I, I can't. Yeah, say yeah, no, like deadly that. seriously, deadly seriously, and actually, females can get away with more than a male. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, why is that? I, I, in general, a male won't feel threatened by a female, but they'll th they might feel threatened by another male, right? Um, but. I would, I would definitely be prepared for that question, right? Be prepared. What do you want to be when you grow up? Type question. That question, your aspirations, and have a good answer. Um, and it doesn't have to be real. It just has to be credible. And it's an opportunity for you to talk a little bit more about some other aspect of your personality or interests or things it's another opportunity to sell yourself because that's what you're really doing here. You're trying to sell yourself. You know, I, I, I want to figure out why that I can't not hire this person. I can't not hire them. They're so good at this and that and come over so well. And I would love to have the part of the team. You, it's, it's a fight and you're trying to get to the top of the pile and be the person that they cannot refuse. I see. Thank you. Okay, so a couple of points then on things you said. Um, I've put the points I made, I, the notes I made in the chat. Um, you said, I want to be an always learner, always learner. And that's, that's not good English, right? right. So um, I know what you mean though, obviously, but um, the way to phrase that is I am, um, a keen learner, right? Not always learner. Always learner is, is bad grammar, right? Always learner is not, not English, right? You could say, I'm a keen learner. I'm always learning new things. You could say, I'm a keen student. Um, I get off on learning new things. Different ways to phrase it. But, but I would never say, I'm an always learner, right? You could say, I'm always learning. I'm always learning new things. I'm always reading books. I'm researching things. These are all valid things to say, but not, I'm an always learner, okay? Um, you went on and volunteered that you were a curious person and I gave you marks for that. That was good. Because I was gonna ask you that, are you a curious person? So that's a very, that's a very good attribute. If you're curious and will find things out of your own volition without being told to go do it. So a curious person does that. So that's, that's seen as a very positive thing. Um, you said you enjoy problem solving. That's good. Um, then I asked you about, have you worked with others to build something? Your immediate answer in that was, well, I've run departments and things like that. And that's not really what I was looking for. 
it was a fine thing to add, but I wouldn't add, I wouldn't lead with that. I, uh, the way I would answer that question is, I would say, I'm a good team player. I like working in a team. Yeah, no problem. And on the question of how do you deal with a colleague who is not um, pulling their weight, you said, you know, maybe I would speak to them individually and then if that didn't work out, I might take it to HR or to a um, more senior manager. I think that's what you said. No. Um, I wouldn't say this in an interview, right? So we're not out of the English lesson and we're into interview real things to say and not say. I wouldn't say that and just not go there, right? So if a colleague is not pulling the weight, then you just live with that, right? Because they, they will be found out. You don't have to go and point it out, but others will notice, others will complain, their manager will get a sense of it, their manager will empty them, right? You don't have to do it. You don't have to help them along. If you're asked for your honest opinion and what is Rob's contribution, you can say, right? But it's definitely a bad idea to be stabbing people in the back, but you basically don't do that. But um, you won't sing their praises either, right? And that, that will get conveyed. So you're much better saying, a better answer I would suggest is to say, um, well, I will just, do my best to try and compensate for that lack myself by doing some extra. Um, I don't mind that, I've done that in the past and that's how I would deal with it. Um, I'm a non-confrontational person. Um, like taking a person to HR, nobody does that. The only people who do that are women who in some way have been... Um, harassed? Yeah, harassed, sexual harassment. Well, a, a woman, a woman is perfectly within her rights to do that, and they do do that in the UK and in other countries, right? So, if a woman is getting harassed in any kind of sexual way, then she should and has the right to go and complain, and that will be dealt with very strongly, very strongly, very quickly. But you wouldn't take somebody to the HR because they're not performing very well. You would take, you would only ever go to their manager or your manager if it needed raised but I, I wouldn't in general i wouldn't rush to do that as a as a, a piece of received wisdom right just you just bear with it right and it'll work I, out. uh you know i was uh, <laughs> i was thinking to stop uh, where i said uh, i i will talk to the person individually but uh, i thought about the problem solving yeah and I, I thought maybe it's not problem solving, it's just um, living with the problem, you know? I thought maybe there is no point uh, in the interviewer's mind that uh, I am just living with the problem. Maybe there is no perfect answer to this question, right? I'm just gonna go outside now because I'm too hot, right? Whoa, roasting. Um, yeah. There is no perfect answer to this question, right? There's just not, there's just not. So um, I don't think they would connect it necessarily to, uh, to the problem solving thing. I don't, I don't think they would do that necessarily. Um, oh, I yeah, I don't think so. Thanks. Okay, so hopefully that was fun guys. That always, it always takes longer than you think. I mean, we've been going an hour and 20 minutes, believe it or not. <laughs> and we've done some interviews. So let's do no more than that. So I think we've lost Shweta. Is that Shweta we've lost? Um, uh, 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 yeah, we have. We've lost Shweta and we've lost Akshaya. There's just four of you left. And um, we've got Mona, Anjali and Elhan. So it, it, the next idea was the one that Shweta had, which is we could just talk about some random topics for a bit. Um, let me stop here and see if anyone has any specific questions on last week's homework. 
or any other words that we've used. No, okay. Um, that's fine. So, um, uh, I, excuse me, sir. I yeah, have a doubt uh, in the grammar section. I'm sending you on the WhatsApp. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Hi, Mona. Uh, excuse me, teacher. Uh, I have one question uh, because uh, I don't know uh, really the difference between um, candid and navy. Uh, I think that um, candid is uh, in positive meaning, yes. I'm not sure about this. No, no. L let, let me, yes, let's. I uh, still haven't received the WhatsApp yet from Anthony. So let's deal with your question while uh, Anjali sends her WhatsApp. So, Thank you. yeah, so we'll deal with your question first. So, so let me give you my answer and then we'll, we'll, we'll do the jump to the web thing and see what the web is saying, okay? okay. Candid means where you are open and you are telling the truth and you're telling the whole truth. You give a very honest answer, but you were definitely not holding anything back. That's the idea of being candid. And I was distinguishing being candid from being honest because they're both in the same sort of milieu, to use a word we've used in the past, in the same ballpark. But there's a difference because the idea of honesty is being truthful and not doing anything wrong you know particularly in your speech that you're giving an honest answer you're telling the truth that's what honest means but candid doesn't mean that a candid answer is an answer that says i am telling you the truth but i'm also being transparent is the other word i used transparent i'm I'm not holding anything back. It's the idea of candid, that's candid. Now, so first of all, let me pause and say, does my explanation of that word and the difference between candid and honest make sense to you? Then we'll talk about naive in a moment. But does that make sense to you, Mona? Uh, I didn't understand uh, okay, the that's... difference between candid and navy. I, I know. Na so naive doesn't mean anything Na to do with these. Naive. Naive is hard to pronounce. Naive. And yes. it means something entirely different, right? Naive would describe someone who, uh, what I said earlier was, somebody who believes every word. So, in other words, there's no skepticism in them whatsoever. So they take what people say on face value. So, for example, if I said to you, do you know what? I'm really rich. I'm actually richer than Bill Gates. Now, if you believed me, you would be naive. Okay. And was that making sense? Does that make sense? Uh, uh, it has a negative meaning, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. It's a negative meaning. Okay. Um, it's saying that somebody is a little bit simple, in a sense, because they're just accepting what people say at face value without evaluating whether it could be true or not. See, when somebody says something to you, right, that's input, right? And then you will process it and say, well, is what they said, does it ring true? Could it be true? Might you know, is there any reason why they wouldn't be telling me the whole truth? Okay. You know, like, for example, a politician, right? A politician will say a lot of things. And everyone knows that politicians don't tell you the whole truth. And sometimes they yeah. don't tell the truth at all, right? But if yes. you were a certain person and you said, well, I believe everything he says, you would be naive. That okay. would not be smart of you. Is that making okay. sense? Is that making sense? Uh, 
I got it. Thank you. Okay. So before we go, let's just jump to the web. So let me um, let's pull up my web browser, um, and we'll we'll say define naive. Right now, I need to share my screen, of course, so I do that. Bear with me a second while I find my window and share screen. There we go. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Now, so I've just said, look up naive. Now let's read what it says. Adjective of a person or action showing a lack of experience, wisdom, or judgment. The rather naive young man had been totally misled. Of a person, natural and unaffected, innocent. Andy had a sweet, naive look when he smiled. So in the second, second use case there, it's not really negative. It's just saying he is unsophisticated in a way. He is young. Okay. Um, of third thing is of or denoting art produced in a style which deliberately rejects sophisticated artistic techniques and has a bold directness resembling a child's work, typically in bright colors with little or no perspective. I've never heard of it used that way before. You learn something every day. As we say, every day is a school day. So I would say to you that the first definition here is by far and away the most common one. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you, teacher. Now, let's look up while we're here. Let's look up candid. Truthful and straightforward, Frank. Of a photograph of a person taken informally, especially without the subject's knowledge. Yes. So I do a lot of this kind of photography. It's called candid photography. This is a different use of the word. And it's where you're snapping somebody, not posing. See, if we were all together and I said, now I'm going to take a photograph, everybody look at the camera, that would not be a candid shot, where it's a posed shot. But the kind of photography I like to do if I'm at a wedding is where nobody's looking at the camera and I'm just snapping people and you're getting them more as they are. That's called candid photography, you see? Okay. And it comes from this idea of truth and straightforward, Frank. Right. So, to me, it's not quite. Is that the answer here? Isn't as good as my answer was, frankly. Let me let me um, let me look up Cambridge and see what it says. Okay. Um, honest and telling truth, especially about something difficult or painful. Yeah, that's sort of getting towards it. Okay. You see, so he's being honest, but he's also he's telling you the whole story. Is how I put it. You're telling the whole story. That's what candid means. Okay. So to be candid with with you i think you're making a dreadful mistake so you're about to do something and i i don't think you should do it mona and i might say to you look to be candid with you i don't think you should do that so i'm being okay. honest but i'm also holding nothing back it, there's this idea of not holding back with candid okay thank you so let me um let me cease to share screen okay Right, Anjali, let me look at your WhatsApp now. Okay, I'm looking at it. What's the question? Anjali? Question number 15. 15. I doubt he wants to sell that phone. He's only just bought it. I would have used just here, but there is only two. Good question. Excellent question. I doubt he wants to sell that phone. He's only just. Yeah, but you see, there is only there already. He's only just bought it. So you never say he's only, only bought it. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't know it's just there. You would use just. He's only just bought it is the right answer. Okay. Does that make sense? And that yeah, is, I never, yeah. I've never heard like that sentence. 
Really? The structure, that structure. Yeah, it's very common. Um, it's very common in Blighty. Yeah, I, I've only just bought it. Um, are those new glasses, Alan? Yeah, I, I've only just got them last week. I've only just means it, 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 it yeah. was just a short time ago. Yeah. Okay, there was one more word. It was very hard to pronounce. I'm typing that word in the chat. If said is syncretism, I don't know. Yeah, put, you put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Ipsy dixitism. Ipsy dixitism. It's a very hard word to say. Ipsy dixitism. Six syllables. Super hard. No. I only learned this word myself, right? <laughs> so this is a very uncommon word. And it means when you say something, but you've got no authority to say what you're saying. Right? That's, that's, that's what an ipsy dixitism is. Um, I had never heard of it. And I was talking to a colleague, an ex-colleague, um, about the class. And he said, have you heard this word? And I said, no, never in my nelly have I heard that word. So I put it in for a bit of fun. So there you go. It's very uncommon, but it's got a good meaning. If we go back to um, sharing again. Uh, let's look this up, right? Ip, C, Dix, Tism. Can't even spell it. Why am I spelling that wrong? There is a uh, I P S P -E of I P S P. -E. Well, that's what I had. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what I had. Let's let's type it in here. Right, what does it say? Yeah, so it comes from Ipsy Dixic. Is it giving us a definition there? A declaration that is made emphatically as if no supporting evidence were necessary. So, so Ipsy Dixic. And then an ipsy dixitism is something that you've said that is that. So it's ipsy dixit to say that, you know, um, like if I declared something about India, right, but I didn't have any evidence for it, somebody would say that's ipsy dixit. Um, and an ipsy dixitism is an example of that, right? So if I said, and um, Modi is useless, absolutely useless. Well, it might be true or it might not, but you would, if I said such a bold statement, given that he's the prime minister of India, you would really expect me to back that up with some kind of support. But if I didn't back it up in any way, you could say that I was being MC Dixit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so, it say Dixit is an adjective, right? Uh-huh. Let's look it up in a, in a different dictionary, right? See, it isn't even in that dictionary, interestingly. Ipsy Dixic is an assertion without proof. 
Uh, it's not telling me what kind of a word it is. It's a noun. The assertion of that proof. It's it's ipsy dixic. I would have thought it would have been an adjective. Ipsidixitism, I think that that can be the noun. Yeah, I agree with you. An an ipsy dixitism is a noun. But ipsy dixic um is an adjective, isn't it? I wonder if we look it up in the Oxford Dictionary, that's maybe weird. Um, I don't have an account that wants me to log in. I don't have an account with that site. So, okay. So, anyway, I think you and I are right between us. <laughs> But I have never heard this word, right? So it's not common at all. But every day is a school day. You learn something every day. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? There was a there was an expression rude again. I don't know. There was this rude again. It means to regret. Yeah, rue the day. Yeah. So rue the day. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was pausing because it's hard to hear you, but I don't know what's wrong with your sign tonight. It's very difficult to hear you, Anjali. Yeah, so rue the day is an expression that was introduced into English by Shakespeare. So, okay. yeah. So can you please like, tell me some examples about it? Because it's like very weird to use that expression in, the, in this sentence. Okay. So yeah, no problem. And it, it is quite common actually. It's not it's not rare at all. So I could say I rue the day that I joined my present company. And what I am saying in saying that is I am regretting it. I really regret that. Um I rue the day that guy ever came into my life. I really can't stand him and wish he wasn't in my life. I really regret it. That's what it means. So let's okay, do um, let's, how let's, did you, Yeah. In the last sentence, how did you use that conjunction? You said that I rue the day that guy came into my life. Yeah. I rue the day that person came into my life. So let's, 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 let's look at what it's saying. I feel sorry, to feel sorry about an event. She rue the day that she bought that house. So I rue the day or she rue the day, he rue the day, rue the day. You can say rue on its own. You could say that, I rue that. But nobody says that. Everybody says rue the day which they get, they get from Shakespeare. And it's just, it's one of those little formulas that has just come into English and people say it without thinking about it. And they know what it means. It's a statement of regret. I feel sorry, I feel sorry about an event. Rue the day she bought that house. Um, I rue the day I bought that car because it's given me nothing but trouble since I bought it. I rue the day. Let's let let's, let's look up Rue on its own. It's given us the same definition, interestingly. Present participle of ruing or ruing. I've never heard ruing or ruing used, to be honest. Rue the day is the idiom. You feel sorry about an event, wish it had not happened, regret. The reforming conductor's efforts were in vain. Thus, rue an old fashioned literary word for regret. No, that's not very helpful. Uh, th there's a good example. She gave a rueful smile. Right? So she smiled, but it was really a smile of regret. They rue the sociolinguistic impact of 
in migration, invasion and penetration. I don't even know what that means. It's, but but in using it like that, it, it's again, it, it always means regret. Yeah. Right? I'm saying, the dictionary is saying feel sorry, but regret is a better word. It's really regret. I always feel sorry. To me, sorrow is an expression of empathy to somebody else. Right? But you're not feeling, there's no empathy here. You just, you regret, right? We shall live to rule, rue the day that we ever allowed so much of that heritage disappear in the path of the bulldozer. But as it happened, and many are ruining it, but it has happened and many are ruining it. I regard the whole matter as deeply misconceived and misguided exercise, and one that shall rue, we shall rue as time goes on. And one that we shall regret as time goes on, right? It's, it's, an, it's another way of saying that. He may rue the day when he dispensed with that flexibility, I will tell them that they will rue the day that they laughed about it. They'll regret it. Okay, I feel that we have done this word to death. Are you comfortable? I think I, I think it's uh, it's a kind of prediction. The speaker, the first person, is always predicting the uh, the future, maybe. Yeah. Okay. You're right. It's stating something that it will be a regret. You will regret it, is the idea of ruining. It, it, it could be reflective, you know, I rue the day I did that. It's not always in the future, you yeah, know, yeah. but Anjali will rue the day that she, say, ever moved to Britain because she'll hate the weather because it's Baltic here most of the time. It's a nice day today, but most of the time it's not. Uh, can I use it like that? I have rude the day, like I am using yeah. the week to. Yeah. I have rude the day that I made that decision. Yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. Totally. Okay. So, um, let me look up my little black book of words. Yeah. So do you know the expression wet your appetite and wet your sword? Does this mean anything to you guys? Mm -hmm. I'll put it in chat. W E H E T. Have you seen that word before? Uh, no, no. Uh, but I did that. I did that, that expression. And to wet your sword as well. So no, it, it, these are the two times that word is used. To wet your sword. And it's nothing to do with wet, as in W E T. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, WHET means increase, to increase something, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the idea of wedding is to, um, yeah, it's like. Uh, it, it, excuse me, is it wet your appetite? Is it uh, the first drink, the small amount of drink they give when you enter a, a restaurant or something? No. No. Though that's a good guess. Uh, that would be called an aperitif. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but no, that's not what it means. And it's, it's nothing to do with wet as in W-E-T. It's nothing to do with that. To wet your appetite is to um, start your appetite, right? It's to increase your appetite. But Anjali said it means increase, but it doesn't always mean increase, right? Because to wet your sore doesn't mean, it doesn't mean increase, right? At all. So it's the idea of the inception, the beginning of something. To wet your sword is to get ready to cut somebody's head off. That's, the, that's what wet your sword means, right? You get it ready. And to wet your appetite is to take a little thing, usually something that you eat, in preparation for eating the big meal. But it's not the big meal itself. It's something ahead of that. 
but not a drink. Typically not a drink. It could be a drink, but it's typically not a drink. So um, let me again do a screen share. Right, and we'll say, wet your appetite. To wet somebody's appetite, to increase someone's interest in and wish for something, usually by giving them a small experience of it. See, I read an ex excerpt of the book on the web and it whetted my appetite. So that's, that's not wetting an appetite for to eat, it's wetting an appetite to read the book. Yeah. That one kiss had whetted his appetite, right? So that's an appetite for somebody, for, for a person, right? So it's often used like that, right? That's the wet in that sense and then to wet your sword why isn't that coming up to wet is to sharpen you could wet a nice blade with a wetting stone, or you could wet your appetite by having some Doritos. <laughs> the verb wet can mean to stimulate or make more acute. And the word is often used in the phrase wet your appetite, um, which can be used literally or figuratively. To wet is to sharpen. You could wet a nice blade. Wow, it's just really weird. So to wet your sword is to sharpen your sword. And to wet your appetite is to give you a little something that just increases your appetite. It's the idea. Um, so here's some examples over here. These were the issues that whetted my intellectual appetites. See that? The event only whetted the bandit's taste for the something man's blood. And finally, he was obliged to lock up the whole bunch of them um, in, a, in a deep but pleasantly decorated mausoleum. <laughs> because there was a foray Sorry, uh, there's something on the screen, you can read that. Because there is a force that wants you to realize your personal legend, it whets your appetite with a taste of success. So you see that wetting your appetite is often used, not in the context of an actual appetite. It's often used, you know, um, me speaking to some of you ladies in Iran whetted my appetite to find out more about Persia. Did I make that up or is that the truth? If you all going to sleep. <laughs> You know that's the truth, isn't it? Okay. Yes, you bought, you bought a book, I remember. <laughs> I did. Um, Persian Requiem. A Persian Requiem. Now, okay, so I think, I think we've had a good innings, folks. And we've done some interviews and we've done some word definitions and some expressions so we'll we'll call it a day and my appetite is now whetted so for my own dinner right which should be it's coming up six o'clock here so i'll go and eat something tonight we're having some kedri K 
Kedri. I'll maybe take a picture of my Kedri and let you see what that is. It's made with smoked fish. It's very nice. Yeah, thank you. I, I'd like to see what is it. Yeah, I'll send is you. Is it an English uh, meal? It, it's actually Indian, I think. I think, it's, uh, you know, I think it's an, an, Indian, an Indian dish, but oh, we... Okay. It's, it's Kedri, I think. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So we have ruined the word and the spelling. We don't spell it the same, Anjali, but it comes from the same thing. And we make it with rice and smoked fish. And it's very tasty. It's like brilliant. If any of you come to my place, we will serve you kedgeri. It's amazing. <laughs> I would like to taste what it's like in India. I'm sure that'll be even more amazing because the food in India is we would say to die for. It's really good. I love Indian food. I have never never tasted Persian foods. I have no idea what that is. I know you can find some uh, Persian food in London. Sure you can. Yeah, you can find everything in London, but not in Scotland. Yeah. I've never seen it in Scotland, but London, you can find everything. I've tried Lebanese food, Japanese food, you name it. I've tried that. But um, Iranian food, I, I've never come across. I'll, I'll look out for it next time in London. How's that? <laughs> okay, everyone, I'll bid you good evening. Thank uh, you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Chair. See you now. Bye. Bye. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.